Good morning, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. So, you know, a lot of people are really confused about some of the things that are taking place right now. And it's understandable, especially when it comes to like the digital currencies that are out there, the central bank digital currencies, to be more specific. You know, there's banking failures that are taking place right now, and there's a lot of predictions that there's going to be a lot more of these banking failures as the Federal Reserve continues to keep the interest rates elevated at the Fed funds level. Now, there's a lot of debate out there about what's happening, whether or not the Federal Reserve has lost control or is in control or if it's a controlled demolition, and just people are very confused about the whole situation. And really, if you think about it, from a standpoint from 2018 when they were complaining the federal reserve was complaining about a few issues right some of them was like the wage inequality right the the lower wage earners were not earning enough the demographics issue the uh, global growth issue that was taking place um how the neutral interest rate was was too low right all these things were, were talked about in 2018, and one of them specifically was the inflation expectation. And now this is something that I think is quite interesting to think about because inflation expectation is very much a self-fulfilling prophecy. And now a lot of people will think about the Federal Reserve and the money printer go burr, and that's the reason why we have inflation. And, you know, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially when you have this much money injection taking place. But really, it's perception. It's what people are feeling at the time and what they do with their money. That is really what causes inflation. Now, if everybody locked their money up in the bank or in their house and didn't spend any of it, then you wouldn't see that inflation. But it's because the money gets spent out there or even forced to be spent out there is the reason why we have the inflation. And that's really what we saw take place during the pandemic was everybody was told to stay home. And they were given stimulus checks and told to go out there and spend that money at one on whatever they wanted, and they did. And that's really how the money injection from all channels happened at once. At the same time, we had that inventory depletion. Now, between all that, we got an inflation expectation that is now well anchored. Right? People are not expecting inflation to come down. They think it will with the with the Federal Reserve and the rising of the interest rates, especially you know. When it comes to that Fed funds and the banking and you see the crisis, people are anticipating that we will have a pullback in inflation, but yet the Fed funds level is below the inflation rate right now. And there's a lot of people out there who are saying that Jerome Powell doesn't have the cojones to go out there and raise the Fed funds rate up above the inflation rate in order to bring the inflation down. This is a pretty common argument out there. My argument to that is, is that they don't want the inflation to come down. They want inflation to be well, well anchored. Right now, as the economy opens up, once supply starts to find its balance and starts, you know, coming in line with the demand again, then the Federal Reserve will start to adjust its Fed funds rate. But until then, they are not going to bring the interest rates down, no matter how much banking collapse you see. And they are going to cont continue to constrain this economy until they can consolidate a lot of these banks into just a handful of them. Now, at the same time, they have created a situation in which that there is a lot of jobs out there, a lot of a lot of job openings going into this recession that, you know, so far has not been called a recession. I mean, it's hard to believe that. But that's really what's taken place here is that the Federal Reserve had created a situation in which that there was just mass, massive job openings. People had quit their service jobs and went up and started working at zombie corporations. And now the environment that was basically produced to allow this to occur was done on purpose so that the Federal Reserve could continue on with this plan of introducing central bank digital currencies. And now this is so confusing. I understand that. But think about it like this. Back during the pandemic, when they introduced those special purpose vehicles, one of them was the corporate debt lending facility. They hardly bought any corporate debt, but the idea that the Federal Reserve was going to be buying corporate debt sent the markets into mass purchasing of corporate debt. It drove the yields down and the prices way up, and people loaded up, loaded 
up on this corporate debt and the corporations loaded up on cash and they started hiring a lot of people. I mean, you invent, you have to do something with the money, you know, expand your operations, buy equipment, hire people. And so a lot of these corporations who should never have existed in the first place were given a bunch of money to go out there and expand operations. And this is really where a lot of the jobs came from. People wonder where all the jobs went. It went up into these zombie corporations who should never have been there in the first place, but yet they were given the opportunity due to that environment. I mean, I was doing videos back then, feeding feeding taxpayers to zombies is what I, I think I titled that video. Now, I should go back and watch that thing. I don't think I... <laughs> anyway, so this is really the situation that we're in now is that these zombies are going to start failing, and the Federal Reserve is totally cool with it. They know that this was going to happen. They tried to create an environment in which that the unemployment could be as low as it was so that there was a lot of job openings available. So as we roll into this recession and we start knocking the heads off these zombie corporations, all those people can now find jobs over at the service industry. They're not great jobs, but at least it's a job. And now, you know, I mean, they're not... It's not, it's not, maybe not be fair, but it doesn't really matter if there's a job opening available. It doesn't, you know, that means that you have the capabilities of work and whether or not it's the one that you want. That's, that's, I think, probably what a lot of people are probably, are going to be like confusing that whole situation with. And because they think like, you know, I had a hundred thousand dollar a year job. I need, I deserve another hundred thousand dollar a year job. No, you deserve a job and it may be at McDonald's. Good luck. Right. And so and it, that's really what the, uh, what the future is going to look like for a lot of these people as this continues. Now, what's happening in the banking system is just that. The Federal Reserve is going to keep these interest rates elevated. And what that's going to do is it's going to start damaging a lot of these banks' balance sheets, just like we saw with SVB and you know many others to come. What we're going to find is a consolidation of banks, and they're going to all move into just a handful of them. That is going to give the Federal Reserve the opportunity to start introducing central bank digital currencies. Because if you had a massive banking system with all kinds of banks, you got to get everybody on board, and it's not nearly as easy as if you just had to deal with like you know six, right? So it's not like all the little regional banks are going to go under or anything like that, but it's going to be like the primary banks, like the big ones. They're going to go into central bank digital currencies, and then it'll start flooding into the rest of the system after that. But you can see it happening right now. There's a consolidation of it. Now, in order to introduce this central bank digital currencies and start driving the interest rates down, right? Because the central bank digital currency is really more about negative interest rates and going cashless than it is about like track tracing and all that other stuff. It's certainly not about helping the people, right? I mean, that's, a, that's going to be a complete fallacy. Anyway, but it'll be sold to the people is that. It doesn't matter. Anyhow, what we're going to start finding is, is that the as the central bank digital currencies are going to be introduced, they're going to have to figure out a way to start handing those central bank digital currencies the money right to the people because if they continue on with this money injection the way that they do it, if they have new money coming into the system, the rich are going to just are going to just leave, right? They're going to the exponential growth that will take place from a central bank digital currency being introduced will send the rich just absolutely skyrocketing more than they already do right which is already unbelievable it's going to get like way worse so what they're going to have to do is that as they inject this money into the system it's going to be ubi everybody gets it right because universal basic income means that everybody from the rich to the poor get this ubi however they're going to take it right back from the rich again with massive taxes and they already have this planned i mean think about it i'll leave a link to uh, twitter i think it was a twitter link or something like that that somebody had sent me and i i will leave a link down there in the description for it they they know this right they know that there's going to be a have to be a massive amount of tax taxing in order to pull that ubi back away from the rich so that they just don't exponentially leave the the rest of us and we're going to get the ubi in order to keep from basically falling away from the rich okay so this ubi injection it's going to happen regardless of what a lot of people i mean a lot of people think that the monetary modern monetary theory is like you know a good thing or something it's not it's 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 not a good thing it's not a it's not a viable system what it is it's a way to take interest rates into negative territory it's a way to tax the the ever living hell out of the rich that, that they do not like exponentially leave the poor and cause an ever increasing amount of wealth gap uh, it, that's really how it's going to end up playing out right i mean 
Just look at the evidence of it. I mean, the central bank digital currencies are being introduced. They're all over the country, world right now. Every, like, what is it, 111 countries, 14 countries or something like that are all working on it. And the, the idea that the massive tax incoming, the idea of taking interest rates into negative territory, I mean, all this stuff is, has been in play for the last three, four, five years, and it's all leading up to a systemic crash that's going to have to be fixed by the government. Right. And here it is. I mean, it's pretty obvious to me when I when I look at it. I don't know if I can explain it all out there because it's so complicated. But to me, as I start to put these pieces together, I mean, to me, the picture is just quite clear. Like the Federal Reserve brought on the rise of the zombie corporations on purpose in order to create this event. Right? I mean, it's, if you think about it, problem, reaction, solution. As this problem starts to manifest and we start having this contagion or something like that, the government is going to tell the people we need to do something and you have no other choice or else it's going to all fail. We're, we're going to step away from the brink. Remember that? That was what, you know, past administrations had told us. This, it's all part of the game in order to convince the people that we need to change the system in order to keep it going. And really, it's all about saving the rich. I mean, it's, I shouldn't say that because really what we get out of it is a better standard of living. Right? I mean, that's pretty cool too. So the United States gets to enjoy a standard of living because everybody else around the world gets to use our dollar for their, for their world trade. That's pretty cool on us, right? Now, if that lasts forever, that's awesome for us, but I don't think that's gonna last forever and we move into this central bank digital currency, we may find that we have major issues to start to take place as far as the dollar dominance around the world and how it is that we continue on with our way of life without just utterly going to war is beyond me. Uneducated economists, you let me know.